Hey everyone, in a previous video we had disassembled this Glock 26 Gen 4 9mm for cleaning and inspection. This was disassembled to the extent that one would for a standard cleaning of this firearm. The receiver was also cleaned and oiled as part of this procedure, as well as in and around the trigger assembly and the magazine well. No further disassembly of the receiver was conducted on the basic cleaning of this firearm, but I've been asked to do so, so we're going to make another video just dealing with the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of the components in the receiver. So let's get started. And of course, just as before, the first thing we want to do is make sure this firearm is unloaded. This happens all the time. People are not checking to make sure these firearms are unloaded before they clean them. So first I'm going to drop the magazine. Depressing the magazine catch. We see no ammunition in the magazine. I'll place it off to the side. And now we'll lock the slide in the open position using the slide lock. Inspecting now down through the slide, we can see clear through to the bottom, no ammunition. We now look into the barrel, there's no ammunition. Satisfied now that this pistol is unloaded, rack back the slide, close it, place the pistol down. Now we can safely continue. These slide locks allow us to remove the slide from the receiver. They push downward, they're on both sides of the pistol. And we'll start off our process by racking back the slide, after which we're going to pull the trigger. And now what we can do is gently pull back on the slide, grasping it from the back and pushing down on these two buttons like so. While they're down, we release the slide, allowing it to come all the way forward and off of the pistol. We won't be needing the slide in this video. We'll see it again during reassembly. We'll be disassembling the receiver now. And of course, this one doesn't look terribly dirty, but I'm using it as an example for the video. Or what if I dropped it into a puddle of mud? Or what if I bought it from somebody and didn't know the internal condition? To disassemble, we have three pins to remove. This large pin up front, this small pin up front, and this small pin on the rear. And please get a set of drifts for this type of work if you're going to do it. You can even get a cheap set from Harbor Freight. Don't use like a finishing nail. That's disgusting. Get a drift. You also may require something for gentle prying, like a flathead screwdriver of medium size, and a gunsmith tool such as this, which I printed on my 3D printer, will make this job a little easier. I'm going to knock out this top small pin first. This provides the spring tension for the slide stop lever by holding that slide stop lever spring down. We'll see later how that works. Using my size drift, I gently just tap it with a screwdriver a couple times, and it falls right through to the bottom. That's why the block is there, so it has a place to fall. I pull it out and place it off to the side. Next will be that large pin up front. And using a larger drift, I should be able to push it through. By wiggling the slide stop lever, it'll be easier to push through. And it went right through to the bottom. We can see it sitting down there, so I'll move the tool. It has three separate serrations on there. We can see how it's identified. We'll put this off to the side. Now I'll pull out the drift and the slide stop lever should come up and back out. We'll place it off to the side. Now we'll be removing the locking block, which may require some gentle prying with a flathead screwdriver. I could try it with my fingers, but it's just not coming up and that's fine. So just a gentle pry is all it takes, lifting up and now we can get it with our fingers and pull it out of the receiver. And we'll put that off to the side. Using a smaller drift, we'll push through our last pin that holds in the trigger assembly. I'll just gently press it right through to the bottom and it fell right through. We'll have a quick look. It is a smooth and plastic pin. And we'll put that off to the side. Now we'll remove the drift and lifting the assembly from the rear, we pull the entire assembly from the receiver. We'll put the trigger assembly off to the side and we'll be working with the receiver now. Here we see an accumulation of dirt just below where the trigger assembly was removed as expected. This pistol isn't really dirty. I've taken it apart for the video as a demonstration. In the magwell as well, there's some dirt. Nothing terrible though. So we're gonna hit this with a clean patch and just see what we get from this pistol, how much dirt comes up. And obviously the areas readily accessible are clean and the ones that couldn't be hit are gonna be dirty with some sort of accumulation. We'll try a second clean patch. 
For this amount of dirt, we wouldn't be tearing apart a receiver, but what if it dropped in a puddle or you had purchased this pistol and you wanted to completely break it down and inspect it and clean it, you'd be doing something like this, but you probably wouldn't be doing it with a patch if it fell into a puddle. The receiver is composite, it could be scrubbed with a brush and a mild detergent to get all of the dirt out. If you had dropped it into something nasty, I want you to clean it completely. Nothing wrong with that. After washing, it was completely blown out with compressed air. Then it was left to sit for a while just to ensure that all the moisture had completely dried up before assembly had begun. And it'll sit while I clean the other parts. We'll move on now to the trigger assembly, which will require some minor disassembly before we continue. A close inspection shows this metal tab here is captive inside this plastic piece and it's under spring tension. As I pull back, we could see under spring tension, but if I pull back and rotate, it'll come out from under there, separating those two pieces only held together by that spring. I'll put it back and show it again. I pull away and turn to separate those two pieces now only held together by that spring, which I then hold steady so that I can rotate and separate like so. Now these two pieces can be cleaned independently. And I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to clean this with a patch. I would use solvent if needed, but a patch seems to do the job. This piece isn't that dirty. There is one section that I will point out that gets dirtier than the rest. And that is this bend just behind the trigger. We see a lot of dirt coming off of that. Other than that, I'll continue to clean it till all the dirt is gone since we don't do this that often. And that'll be it. Same thing with this piece, just cleaning with a patch. Solvent is probably not necessary. This piece doesn't get too dirty. Just remembering not to bend or break anything or overstretch anything as this is a precision part. Same thing applies for the locking block. Just clean up with a patch and inspect. Use solvent if necessary. Most of this piece is readily accessible, so most of it's going to be clean anyway. Just the underside and the rear might have some accumulation on it. This brings us to the slide stop lever that will also have some accumulation on it. Just being very careful not to inadvertently bend that spring because if the spring is damaged, the entire slide stop lever is going to need to be replaced. The three pins will be gently cleaned and inspected for damage. If the pins are damaged in any way, they should be replaced. The trigger assembly will now be put back together. We see how everything will normally line up. Inside here we could see that spring so we turn it over and shake it and then put our finger under it to hold the spring upward. That spring will connect back through this hole. It's a little bit of an exercise to set everything up to make it lock in, especially through a camera. We see once the spring is through, it should look just like this. Now with everything in position, we could pull and turn this piece so it goes under that plastic piece and straighten out. And that completes the reassembly of the trigger assembly. And this brings us back to the receiver as we start to assemble everything back together. The trigger lowered in first into the trigger well. Once that's started, the rear of the assembly can be pushed into its position and then down locking it into position completing the reinstallation of the trigger assembly. Giving everything a quick once over, making sure everything looks good. We proceed to install the rear pin, that's the small plastic pin, into position. I'm able to push it in with my fingers and then push it in flush using a drift slightly bigger than the pin. Setting it just like that. We look at the other side and see the pin is seated properly. With the pin installed, we move on to the next portion of the assembly. Next will be the locking block, which we will orient in the correct position, pressing down with our thumb and pushing into position. It goes in with little resistance. This top pin is used to provide pressure against the spring and must be installed on the next step before this piece is installed. 
So we install the top pin now by pushing it straight through to the other side. I could press it flush with a slightly larger drift very gently, and now it's in position. We see how that pin is now here, situated to hold tension on the spring for our next piece. We can see as I slowly push in the slide lock how that spring gets compressed. I'll do it a couple more times so we can see close up. Pushing it in, the spring compresses downward. If we put the slide lock in first and then that pin, it would get stuck on that spring and bend. So now I'll place the slide lock in and install the pin. Sometimes I have to wiggle the slide lock, sometimes I get lucky but I always install the pin and remove the pin from the same direction. Checking out the slide lock for tension and the tension is good. The assembly of the receiver is now complete. As there was no oil on this receiver after washing it in the sink, I'll be reapplying oil with a broken end of wooden dowel, applying just a drip where necessary. I don't want to over oil this gun and that is on these rails. I also put a little drip just under the rail right there. Same thing on the rear rail as well. Just a little dot over here, just under there like that. Repeating the same thing on the other side. Here in the rear. A little bit on the top of the locking block right over here. And a drip right here in this metal on metal section of the trigger assembly. I'm gonna pull the trigger forward and back a little bit just to work that in. I'll pull the trigger all the way forward and then engage it and it worked. And now what I'm going to do is pull it forward and then press it, but not in the middle of the trigger. And we see that it doesn't engage. Press it in the middle. It engages. Very good. Now I'll be reintroducing the slide, lining up those rails, slowly sliding the slide all the way back, letting it come forward, pull the trigger, completing the assembly of this firearm. Fully assembled. I'll rack it back and pull the trigger on the trigger safety, rack it back again, and now I'm just gonna pull the trigger on the side. Doesn't engage, good. From the middle, engages, very good. I hold the trigger, rack it back, and slowly release, I hear a click, pull it in, another click. Everything is working just fine mechanically. I insert an empty magazine, pull back the slide, and it locks open, very good. We drop the magazine, Pull back on the slide, and it comes all the way forward. Everything appears to be working correctly. The best test, of course, is at the range. And that concludes this video of the breakdown of the Glock 26 Gen 4 receiver for cleaning and inspection. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks, Thanks for watching. For watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?